Hello class, nice to see you all here this morning. So today, instead of us getting, we will get into baseball, but instead of doing the physical aspects of it, I'm going to give you a little lecture, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to give you a little lecture on the fundamentals of baseball so you can have a good idea of what you're doing when we get into the physical aspect of things. So I'm going to be reading you a book called The Baseball Play and Strategy. And the first thing we're talking about is like the fundamentals, like the stance, your defensive play, um, fly balls in the outfield, and um, what else is there? And catching the ball. So let's get started with the stance. Okay, so the stance of all players, with the exception of the pitcher, is a crouched position with the legs comfortably spread, the feet directly opposite each other, and some catchers have the left foot several inches ahead of the right foot, and the knees are slightly bent. As the ball is pitched, the body is leaned forward and the weight is transferred to the balls of the feet. Outfielders keep their hands on their knees until the ball is hit or passes the batter. Infielders stand similarly or bring the hands forward in front of the knees from the same position. The catcher forms a target with his hands in front of his body between the knees and shoulders. The follow-through position of the pitcher resembles the stance for other positions, except that the body is turned slightly to the opposite side from which the ball is thrown and the foot from which the pitcher throws is usually planted just ahead of the stepping foot. The position of the ball in relation to the player determines his footwork for the start for the ball. When the ball is hit directly in front of a player, the first step, of course, can be made either with the left or with the right foot. If the ball is in front and to the right of the player, the first step is made with the left foot. The first step is with the right foot if the ball is forward to the left of the player. When the ball is in back and to the right of the player, the first step is to the rear with the right foot. The first step is to the rear or with the left foot if the ball is back and to the left. The catcher and infielders may start back with a crossover step since there is no grass to impede the turn for their spikes. The above footwork, also used for starts and performing duties such as covering and backing up bases, short steps are taken at first and the stride is gradually increased until maximum speed is attained or until the desired defensive position is reached. The arms are swung at the sides and no effort is made to reach the ball until the time of the catch. So now we're going to catching the ball. A player tries to keep his body directly in front of fly balls and ground balls. The hands are cupped and the eyes remain centered on the ball until the catch is completed. On some hard smashes, a retreat is first made toward the path of the ball to attain a better throwing position. This, however, normally excludes retreating directly back. Now fly balls. In catching fly balls, the feet are approximately in a normal walking position. <clears throat> a right hand thrower catches the ball with his left leg forward and a left hand thrower with the right leg forward. If the ball is caught above the belt, the body is erect and the hands are held either with the thumbs together and fingers up or with the thumbs out and fingers up. The latter method <clears throat> Excuse me. The latter method of offers an advantage in both vision and throwing. When the ball is caught below the belt, the trunk is bent forward. Well, I apologize. Let me find my spot. Okay. Most catches are made about four arms length from the body. The hands are extended beyond this point prior to the catch, but move back toward the body as the ball goes into the glove. This action continues until the hands part from the throw. When a player is sure he can catch a fly ball, he yells loudly and instantly, I have it, or I'll take it. In response, a teammate calls the player's name, thus informing the player there will be no interference while making the catch. Other terms may be used, but take it is specifically avoided because it may be constructed as I'll take it, no, no, and plenty room are guys or guides where obstructions may interfere with the catch. If a fly ball goes near the sun, the player keeps to the side of the ball and shades his eyes with his glove or bare hand. If the sun is to the right, the eyes are shaded with the right hand and when it is to the left, with the left hand. It is often possible to look away when the ball nears the sun and still make the catch. This is particularly true on high fly balls. Many such balls are caught even though the sight may be temporarily impaired by following the ball into the sun. A glance toward the ground is used in this case to restore normal vision. 
The previous explanation also applies to lights when night games are played. Okay, now we're getting into ground balls. In catching ground balls, the body is kept low and controlled so that the weight can be shifted to meet any change in the course of the ball. When possible, an advance toward the ball is made with the arms hanging loosely at the sides. The ball is caught at the maximum height of a bounce or just after a bounce happens. Most grounders are fielded with legs in approximately the normal walking position and with the weight of the balls of the feet. The knees and the hips are bent and the ball is caught opposite the front foot with the thumbs out and fingers down. A right hand thrower has the left foot forward and the hands are caught slightly beyond the point where the ball is caught and moved back toward the body. As the ball goes into the glove as in catching a fly ball. This action is continued until the hands part for the throw. Okay, now throwing the ball. In throwing the ball's grip toward the ends of the first two fingers and thumb with only moderate finger pressure. The ball is more likely to travel straight with the fingers across the wide set separation of seams as shown in the illustration. This is particularly true on overhand throws. There are many times when it is impossible to grip the ball with the fingers across the seams, especially if a hurried throw is necessary. However, unless a very short snap throw is required, the fingers can be shifted to this position as in the hands come back after the catch. After a little practice, it is possible to do this without actually walk watching the ball. An overhand throw is made by shifting the weight to the throwing foot and making a moderate step with the free foot toward the direction of the throw. A right hand throw shifts the weight to the right foot and a left hand throw to the left foot. The arm is bent through the first part of the throwing action and is whipped to an extended position as the weight is transferred to the front foot. A short hop in place or toward the direction of the intended receiver frequently adds momentum to the throw. The hop is forward and to the left if it is necessary to reach to the left for the ball. This brings the body to a good throwing position. The right arm is extended toward the direction of the throw and the right leg is extended to the opposite direction. This conforms to the theory of opposition and is a good balance position for all overhand throws. Okay, so that's all I'm going to give you guys for today. So all I want you to do is find five main points that you thought was interesting that you learned that you didn't already know and write it down on a piece of paper and bring it back to class the next time. So thank you very much and have a great day.